And, and this one, this one, they had this one too that was pretty amazing. Last train to Clarksville. You know, of course, the Beatles and Stone. You know that. You know that. That all came across on a tele, on, on television, on Ed Sullivan. But when I heard my, you know, the Monkees were a huge, huge band on TV then back then, and um, when I heard them play, I, blaringly loud after school one day, I was like, I mean, it was pretty badass. I made it to junior high school and. Uh, I wasn't really doing anything musically, and I said, they had this orchestra, and my friends goes, why don't you come out, come out to the orchestra? And I said, well, I don't really play anything. You know, so I saw the violin, I said, okay, how about the violin? So I sat, you know, I started, I looked at the violin, I picked it up, and I started, and then I was like the last violin, and then I studied it, I started working at it, so in like three weeks, I became like the first violin. So I obviously had musical aptitude, and you know, the violin was really, you know, okay for, for a while, but then I noticed that, you know, you know, if you played guitar, you'd be very popular with the ladies. And so that's what really drove me to pick up a guitar, because the violin, you know, that's the best one. That one, Painted Black. All those, all those early Beatles stuff was amazing. <laughs> Twist and Shout. Techniques? Struggling? Me? No. No, I pretty much, I, I pretty much could get all that because uh, I started playing because of the blues. You know, and you know, when you, you know, the most important thing that I thought of listening to blues when I started is this, you know. It's called vibrato. If you couldn't do that, you're, you're screwed. Buddy Guy called it the bender. You have to, you have to be able to, to bend them notes, baby. In the beginning, I really wasn't writing all the songs, but the, this one, Andy and I put together, was like the best one. Next big thing. Also, as I think I was the first guy to do these octave things. A lot of the newer bands do that all the time. You know, I hear that all the time in, in music. We had a song called um, Cars and Girls on our first record, and it was like... I'm the type of guy who's into getting high on a Friday afternoon. My first song that I wrote uh, for the band, it, it was this one, I think, it was called Shell Shock. It goes like There's no charge for the haircut and the bullets come free. Uncle Sam sent a letter. He got a mission for me. Shell shock. And this one with Orson Welles on it. You know, Dark Avenger. Avenger. 
Well, there were all those other records there. There was Into Glory Ride, there was Secret of Steel, there was uh, um, Hail, to Hail to England, Each Dawn I Die, you know. <laughs> Hail to England, Each Dawn I Die, Army of the Immortals, I wrote. Um, I didn't write Hail to England. I wrote um, Gloves of Metal, I didn't clearly write Gloves of Metal, Secret of Steel, uh, The Oath, Kings of Metal, uh, Hail and Kill. So it goes, uh, the chorus is. Hail, hail, hail and kill. I could tell you that this is probably the best record, our best record. Um, it's fierce. It's amazingly produced. C. Lieberman of Orden Orgain did an amazing job with the mix. It's called Born of Fire. I strongly rec recommend this if you want to get your head kicked in. It's a beautiful record. It really is. The, you can see the artwork is tremendous. It was done by Stan Decker of France. He did the last uh, artwork on, uh, by Bloodsworn with this one. Look at that. You see, no more ugly guy with a sword on, on, my, on my record. We're going strictly strong, powerful women. We have a, we have a song out on YouTube, it's called by, Denied by the Cross. Uh, it's, it's a great tune, it's, it's, it's lighting up YouTube, so it's like... Um <laughs> Of course, the you get the picture. All right, so this is uh, Born of Fire. This is the title track on the record. Singing. Of course goes. It's a great chorus.